Hello and welcome to my lecture on relational database design in MySQL. What we're really talking about here is the move from one table to multiple tables. Uh, SQL with its select, update, insert, delete uh, provides basic CRUD operations and that's how we insert and maintain data in a database. But that's not really where the power of the database comes in. The power of database happens when we model material in different tables and then connect those tables with what we call foreign keys. Um, and it's this complexity and this separation of data and the, the smallest of connections and, and cheap inexpensive connections that are uh, much cheaper than sort of scanning lots of data. You just jump to, the, to, to a bit of data somewhere on a hard drive. And it uh, allows us to handle you know, billions of records uh, in a hundredth of a second. And, uh, and so it's all very clever. There's a lot of computer science involved. And database design, uh, I'm just going to talk about the basics of it, is an art form that you get better with the more you do it and the more real production applications. Uh, people ask me often, how do you, what's, what's the best advanced class? And, and the answer is the adva best advanced class is to work on a real system and have good mentors that can help you because it's, it's hard to hard to know in advance all the things that you're going to encounter. So database design often starts with a picture that captures the multiple tables and the relationships between those tables. And it has to do with a problem space. This is a portion of a data model from a project that I have called Sugi, which is a learning tool hosting environment. And this is just a portion of the data model. And the data model pictures, and, and what this is, is each of these items is you know, as a table, and then there's other tables, they give given names, there's data in these tables, and then there are connections between the tables, and these little roads uh, model the connections between the tables. And we'll, we'll talk all about this stuff in this next couple of lectures. Um, this can get really large. Uh, part of a project, another project I'm part of is called Sakai, which is a open source uh, learning management system. And this is just one, this is probably about one-tenth of the data model of Sakai. This is the part that models assessments. And so I had to zoom it way out just to see all the different tables. And you go like, why did they do this? It seems like such a simple problem. And the answer is performance. We build all these complex relationships and model the data based on the connections. And that's the important part of this, right? You know, here's like, you know, address, phone number. But the speed comes from carefully not duplicating data and modeling as much as you can that is, will affect performance with these connections. And so often if you're starting a new application, you need to draw a picture. And you draw a picture of the kinds of different objects in the real world that exist in your application. And the first and most basic rule of data modeling, and there is lots of subtlety to this, but the most basic rule is never put the same string in twice. And so in a learning management system, each user has a name, and my name might be Charles Severance. If you were to look through the database tables of a well-designed learning management system, and you looked all through all the tables, you hopefully would see the string Charles Severance when it refers to my name, one place. And then everything has to point back to that if it's going to display Charles Severance on the screen. You'd see Charles Severance displayed all over the place in the user interface, if it was you that was logged in. Um, but in the database, there should only be one copy. And if you start allowing there to be more than one copy of who the current logged in user's name is, and then you do that a little bit, and then you put 100 million users in, and then all of a sudden you've got a lot of data, and then all of a sudden you've got a lot of data to scan. And so it's so much easier to like have a little pointer to say, he's user 2012, and then bam, you've got user 2012. And so it just it has to do with efficiency. But we, we do want to separate out the, the re real world things in our database model. So here's a little model that I'd like to start with. It's a model from iTunes, Apple's iTunes. And we have a number of columns and we have a user interface. And so we've got to separate out the user interface from the underlying storage structure. And so in this user interface, we're saying we're going to model tracks. And there's going to be how long the track is, what artist it's from, what album it's from, the genre of it, the rating, and the count. And you could just put this in a big, long spreadsheet. And I bet you've, you've tried at times to <clears throat> 
model perhaps your DVD collection in a spreadsheet and you find after a while that it's really kind of weird and you replicate data and you start typing the same thing over and over and over again and it just doesn't make a lot of sense because you know eight to ten tracks come from an album and an artist an album artist combination and and so in, in in our database if we just put everything into one table then we would have to scan the whole table to find things so um, so what we have to do is we have to look through the data that makes up our application. Of course, this is far simpler than most applications. And we have to say, is this a new object that we haven't seen before? Like, you know, an album is a thing, a track is a thing, a artist is a thing. And so then you say, but or is the piece of data, you know, part of an part of this part of one object or is it truly a different object? And so we basically would sit in a room, a whiteboard, and we would say, hmm, which of these things are separate objects and which of these things are parts of other objects? And so the other thing you say is like, what's the most basic and what's the essential feature of this application that we're building? And what is its core model? And you're going to relate all these things together eventually. And, and it doesn't matter where you start, but it's a little easier sometimes if you start at the right place. So let's just say that the first thing we're going to model is track, okay? And now we have to look at all the other things. Is, is an artist part of a track? No. Is an album part of a track? No, an album is a thing. An artist is like a person. A track is another thing. Uh, a genre, well, we'll figure that out. But certainly rating, length, and count, that's part of a track. It's clearly and obviously part of a track. So the next question is sort of what is the thing that's most related to a track? Well, I think it's probably album, right? An album really, is uh, a track is made up of many albums, so a track belongs to an album. And then we say, okay, uh, what does an album belong to? Well, an album belongs to an artist. So an artist make albums, so a track belongs to an album and it belongs to artists. Now the question might be, what does genre belong to? Where does a genre connect to? We could connect the artist to genre, we could say, you know, a Led Zeppelin is a rock artist. We could say uh, Who Made Who, ACDC's album. That's a rock album. Uh, or we could say a track. And now this is a point where, as we're designing our application, it might make a difference. Um, you know, if, if we decided that uh, ACDC was metal or rock, and then later ACDC made a Christmas album, could we... Can ACDC also be jazz? And so it's important where you connect these things. And so if you play with your iTunes a little bit, you will notice that every track, even on an album, can be of a different genre. And so the proper place to connect the genre is to the track. Because we can change every one of these independently. Even though this is four tracks, this is four tracks, this could be rock, this could be easy listening, this could be whatever. And by connecting genre to track, we can change these. Now, in this particular album, they're all the same. But we have now made a data model for this particular application. 